This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and things got burned. Bands. If you want to hear me do nothing but talk about bands for over an hour, you can check out the Twitch VOD of the Band Reaction show. You can also check out the Arena Craft podcast, which I put a post about a few days ago, or search YouTube for Arena Craft podcast. Arjuna and I run our mouths about bands. Me, it was August, and I was feeling a little bit of burnout gremlins. So when I do that, I usually record a few days in advance, which is why the last two days... You haven't heard anything about bands in the videos because I recorded that ahead of time because nothing happens in frickin' August usually. Usually it's a dead format, waiting for new cards, waiting for rotation, and it's usually a good time to pre-record some content. Well, Wizards put a kibosh, whoosh, whoosh, destroyed my plans. Thanks, Wizards, but really thanks. They banned Wilderness Reclamation. They banned Teferi Time Raveler. A single man tier. That's all that's all you get from me now to fairy. They banned Gross Spiral. They banned Cauldron Familiar. Hey, hey, to the people posting like save the cat stuff on my videos. There's the door. Get out of my comments with that crap. I'm so glad the cat is gone. How much collective time have we wasted with stupid freaking cauldron familiar? I've been asking for that to get banned since April. Anyway. Anyway, now's the time. It's a new meta. Your other decks might work. Teferi Time Raveler is gone. It is time for Flash. It is time to try the things that have failed. So this is Demir Flash. Can Demir Flash compete now? I have been up and down and around the block with Demir Flash. I have tried so many different builds. I have tried it with Mutate. I have tried it with counter spells. This is the build I think is legitimately good. Legitimately good. And it mostly comes from leaning on what I would call my Flash Lords. Here are my Flash Lords. Brineborn Cutthroat and Slitherwisp. These turn your Flash creatures from very mediocre small bodied creatures that also have the word Flash and have, very, for the most part, below average rates into actual value engines where you draw a card, you drain, you make this bigger. You know, that kind of thing is really important because without it, the deck doesn't do much. Here's an honorary Flash Lord. This is Gadwick the Wizened. You know Chadwick. Whenever you play a blue spell, you get to tap target thing that the opponent controls, which makes it really hard for them to attack or block you when your stuff has flash. So these are honorary flash lords that make the deck tick. The rest is glue to hold the deck together. The one mana flash cards like Spectral Sailor and Thieves Guild Enforcer are pretty important because they let you get multiple triggers on Cutthroat, multiple triggers on Slitherwisp. They let you turn the game from a defensive battle or even to lopsided very quickly in the mid game. Like when out of nowhere, if you have a cutthroat and a slither wisp, and then you play a sailor, an enforcer, an enforcer, and now you have an insane amount of power on the battlefield, perhaps the attack the opponent just put together, perhaps you just have a lethal counterattack. It's possible. I've done it a few times. It's a thing. Um, other things you might say, isn't Cunning Nightbonder a Flash Lord CGB? Dude. Dude, this card sucks. It's a glue card. It is a rogue. So it works with Thieves Guild Enforcer to fill Graveyard, which can help with some other things like Drown in the Lock that we'll get to. But for the most part, this card isn't good. The cost reduction only applies to a handful of cards. It applies to the Paragon, the half of Brazen Borrower, and the Whisper Agent that we'll get to in a minute. And it applies to Cutthroat, but we usually have this awkwardness of wanting to play Cutthroat first. I still think it's worth playing a few. But you never want to draw two, like, you never draw, want to draw more than one. Hardly ever. Because they don't really help each other, and nothing here gets reduced by two. So, yeah, be careful. Just because it says, like, it looks like a Flash Lord, it's actually a pretty bad Flash Lord. One of the good things about it, though, is the mana. You can cast it with blue or black hybrid, which is another point in favor of Whisper Agent, who is also a rogue. This card, in a vacuum, is pretty bad. It's a 3-2 for 3 
with Flash and it surveils one. But if it triggers a Gadwick or a Brimeborn Cutthroat or a Slither Wisp or a Thieves Guild Enforcer and makes it a 3-2 because it's a rogue, then this card looks a lot better. And the surveil, the surveil is just kind of make sure you don't flood or make sure you hit land, which this deck does have some problems with. If this deck, if this card weren't in the deck, it would just be like 26 lands instead of 24, right? So uh, I think it's a good glue card. A glue card is a card that doesn't have the best rate, isn't the best, um, isn't the best at anything really, but it holds the rest of the deck together so that when you don't draw your key cards, your deck still functions. And when you have glue cards, usually you only want to run two of them. I see a lot of people make mistakes and run like four of a card that's just kind of good. Um, and a good kind of good example here is Whisper Agent Cunning Knight Bonder. They're good two ofs, not four ofs. All right, Blacklands Paragon. This is sort of a removal spell that gains life, but also gives us those flash triggers that we like so much. And you know Brazen Borrower, but it's also a rogue, so it works with the Enforcer. Then to finish it off, I have six removal spells, Disfigure, Heartless Act, and Drown in the Lock, which can also be a counter spell and plays well with the Enforcer. Once again, like which of these is good really is situational. So running like four of them isn't particularly right. And we actually have more removal than it looks like we have because we have Brazen Borrower and Black Lance Paragon. The thing that's gonna drive some of you crazy is I only run two counter spells in these drown and blocks. Why not more counter spells? I find that the opponent plays carefully against the counter spells anyway. And if you want to run Mystical Dispute, make some substitutions like that, I won't blame you. But for the most part, we're pretty good against sweepers because we flash our stuff in anyway, and there's no more Teferi Time Raveler to force us to play into it. So I've found counter spells to be mostly unnecessary, while playing to the board and having more threats to be very effective. And uh, yeah, let's dive in. I think you're gonna like this deck. The way it plays is better than it looks. So let's let the nonsense begin. This hand is pretty great. We don't have a way to get things into the graveyard yet for Drown. How about a Thieves Guild Enforcer? Can I have one of those? I think we'll bottom the land. Part of me says we're going to need it. Part of me also says, you know what? We do need it, actually. We have too many tap lands in this hand. That was kind of a tough re kind of a tough call. Mono green or adventures? We will see. We will see. Getting the cutthroat down and getting it growing is always mission one, with mission two being to draw a bunch of cards off the Slither Wisp. Opponent decides to rumble. Casting Castle Garenbrig, definitely mono green mage. And scavenging ooze right away. Here we go. Game on. You might have seen a you might have seen or felt a stone coil serpent read right there. Opponent coming in with the love struck beast. So, can't really kill it right now. So it can resolve. Let's see if the opponent has the guts to attack. No guts. All right, then we'll get the Wisp down. And hopefully draw some flash cards. There's a flash card. A little awkward. Let's keep the land. We want to hit our land drops here. We'll say go. We'll disfigure on our opponent's turn on the 1-1 one -one probably. Can also disfigure the ooze and then drown in the lock hits the 1-1. One -one. Since the opponent doesn't have a graveyard, that Bonders Enclave is interesting. It draws a card if they have a creature for, with power four or greater, and they do. They've got the beast. Brazen Borrower also takes this out. It just doesn't power up Drown in the lock. Yeah, I'm waiting for like the fight effect here. Playing around these fight effects like uh, Primal Might. And yeah, there it is. So they left two mana open. That certainly implies that they have something else. That's a problem. Disfigure doesn't save the Wisp. We can just kill the beast if they respond though with another removal spell, we lose the Wisp. And we really do need the Wisp, but I guess this is the way it has to be. First, let's disfigure the ooze before there's a card in the graveyard for the ooze to eat to grow. Then let's Heartless Act 
Destroy target creature with no counters on it, the beast. And now the opponent still has to deal with a 5-4. Even if they had another way to kill this, which it looks like maybe they had two Primal Knights. Maybe that was what was going on. You'd think we could kill this with the with the uh, Drown in the Lock, but no. It has protection from multicolor. Rip. Let's send the 5-4. Start the aggression. The 1-1 one, one wants to take a block. That's fine. Opponent has three cards in their graveyard. Three cards for Drown in the Lock to do something useful with. There's a Yorvo. So do we let that resolve and then kill it? I think we might even want to... We definitely want to use both sides of Petty Theft this turn because we get the effect from Slitherwisp and we get our clock going. So I think the plan is to Brazen Borrow this. And that's the scoop. Yes, take that mono green. Here we go. Nightbonder cutthroat nonsense. Let's keep it. Let's fetch now. Since it will come into play tapped and we don't know if we're going to draw our fourth land. Turn one love struck beast. Two games in a row, by the way. Let's see if that token attacks. Maybe a cunning night bonder can can jump in there. It's always do you start with a cutthroat? Do you start with the night bonder? It depends. If they attack, I'm definitely doing the night bonder. This is the exact same start as the last game. Okay, we'll go with the cutthroat then. We have two flash spells for next turn. We have Cunning, Night Bonder, and Paragon, or another Cutthroat. Could be fun. Yep. No need to kill any of this now. Dare you attack? No. All right, play a Night Bonder. Play other Cutthroat. Our creatures are going to get really large. Do we want to play a spell on our turn, just kill the beast and get aggressive? I don't think so. We can wait. Once again, mono green, they rely on fight effects. So if you kill their creature in response, that's really good. That's Vivian. We don't have a counter for Vivian. Let's see what Vivian wants to do. Remember, once a counter is on a creature, a Heartless Act can't kill it, so we may need to respond to this, depending what the opponent chooses to do. And they're going to go for the fight. Hmm. Yeah, let's just get them dead. Destroy target creature with no counters on it. No creature means no damage. And let's play the Sailor. It can fly over and kill Vivian for sure so that we can attack our opponent with our larger creatures. Do we want to trade a Night Bonder for the Ooze? <clears throat> it's a pretty good trade, right? Our opponent has creatures in the graveyard. Let's offer it. Yeah, they take it all. Wow. Down to eight life. I, will not go extinct. I don't know, Vivian. You might be getting close to extinct here. Hmm, music is on. I don't hear music, do you? Weird game. All right, let's petty theft your Yorvo. Just keep making green miserable. This is almost an identical game to the last one. And they scoop before they even see that we have a Paragon as well. Holy cow. The Cutthroats. Doing the thing. On the draw, the cutthroats are here yet again. But on the draw is scary. We'll have to see how this goes. Puppo. Doggy, doggy, dog. Sailor? 
Do we want that? Probably not. We need some removal spells. And we need to hit our land drops. Being on the draw, I think we need higher impact cards in general. And our opponent's going wide. What is going on? Is it Winota? It's a third cutthroat. They're moving in herds. They do move in herds. All right, three damage. They might have a raise the alarm, and they do. They're playing around counter magic. Which we don't run that much of, but yeah, this is, this is rough. We are taking absolute beating here. Bastery's Lieutenant. The target is the dog. So when this dies, they get a knight. So we should do this. So it is another Winota list. They can sacrifice it so I don't get the borrower, or they can let it bounce. It's an interesting decision. Either way, we get a counter on our cutthroat to help stem the bleeding. All right. All right, let's get an enforcer down. Keep making this bigger and stronger. Mill the opponent for two. Gross. Not good draws. <laughs> uh, stalled on land. It's a, tar it's a tough life. Yep. They're not supposed to just go for it. Come on, guys. Anyway, I've been seeing a million Winota decks lately. That seems to be the new hotness, Winota and Basri's Lieutenant. I've been seeing it across several colors, which is interesting. And here's Silverwing Squadron, a flying indestructible. <laughs> Coming in for 16? Are you kidding me right now? All right, I guess I do this. Are you kidding? Silver wing frickin' squad? Ah, I do like this card. It, it, its power and toughness are equal to the number of creatures you control. I did craft it. It doesn't come in booster packs. You have to craft it uh, by checking your not collected menu. But, um, yeah. I, I did try this out in some Winota lists, eventually turned away from it, but now with Bastry's Lieutenant, maybe people are going to give the Silverwing Squadron another look. On the play, two lands. I hate it, but we're going to go for it. We're going to try to be aggressive with a turn one Sailor. Sometimes you want to hold them if you have like a Slither Wisp in your hand and such. Oh boy, the absolute bane of flash decks. The Knight of the Ebon Legion. And then there is the Slither Wisp. The good news is we have the Paragon, which is a pretty good counter to the card. Our opponent coming in with a Scorpion. Mono Black Aggro, I've been seeing this a lot of places. They're scared to attack. They think we have Cunning Knight Bonder. Oof, not good. Not good to get mana screwed playing this deck. All right, let's go for the Paragon. If the opponent has removal for it, we can still get the Cutthroat in there. They can also declare their blocker first. Nope. Okay, no other plays too. That feels good. Now we have Slither Wisp available. Let's be aggressive. Hmm, they must have Rankle, right? They must have something. Like, what are you hanging on to? It's not removal spell and it's not creatures. Are you missing a color? Spawn of Mayhem. Yeah, Heartless Act can get this. And a knight. Okay. I just want to really get this Slither Wisp onto the battlefield. So if we Heartless Act here, we have really good attacks. I don't usually like to play things on my turn, but I think this is right. 
It's just too much damage. They can't ignore it much longer. Down to six. There's the rankle. We sort of predicted it. Let's go ahead and send it back where it came from. And that the opponents had enough of that. That's enough Dimir flash for me for today. All right, we're on the play. This hand looks perfectly fine. We're up against Mr. Legalize. If that's not mono green, I don't know what is. So let's let's go for it. This hand really wants a Slither Wisp, some way to get ahead in cards. Disfigure. Going to put that on the bottom because I just don't know if that's a good card here. Mono white. I want my disfigure. <laughs> I'm a little I'm a little salty. <laughs> oops. Give myself an oops already. Daxos. Yeah, we'll get the cutthroat cooking. This is gonna be tapped. Grr. Makes me angry. Second hawk. I'm not upset with that. It's the haymakers from white that you're looking out for now, the pride mates. Oh, wait. This is not the deck I thought it might be. Okay. That's kind of a rip. That's really rough. We still have Drown in the lock for one of the Hawks, but man, this is this is falling apart. This is a 3-5. I could hold this back to try to get my opponent to not attack me, or I could try to lead them into a Paragon. Perhaps what I need to do next turn, though, is play a Thieves' Guild Enforcer and a Drown in the lock, which gives us four toughness, right? So it would survive this, so... Pass. Ugh. Loxodon and life gain? Those two aren't usually mixed. We're still at 19. If the opponent only attacks me with the Hawks, maybe I only play the Wisp and try to get the cards going. How frustrating. Okay, now I feel like I do have to kill this now. But I'm not sure. We have flyers. We'll find flyers, right? But this clock, four points a turn and lifelink. <sighs> I just want to get the wisp going. We can't really race. I need the cards. I need the cards. We already missed another land drop. An another Loxodon? No freaking way. That's just that's just a total wrecking if they have it. But what was I supposed to do? Like, there's nothing I can really do, right? For crying out loud. Well, they did tap out on this creature. All right, now I have to do this. Gotta slow down the airborne assault. Gotta build my board big enough to fight this off. Ugh. Ugh. Tough game, okay, tough game. I'm doing my best. Double Elephant Jesus is a lot, okay? A lot. Rumble, rumble. Okay, that's a lot of rumble. Let's grow the cutthroat. Rip. That is so mean. That is so freaking mean. 
four cards in graveyard where we we need to buy some time, right? Uh, we've got the we've got the paragon for next turn. But we don't have that much time. I do feel like I need to grow this to some kind of a range where the death touch can be meaningful. God, we're wrecked. We are so wrecked. I need a land. I just don't get them. What the hell is the matter with this game? Uh, let's see. We could play this and try to draw into one, but I think that's too aggressive here. Nothing I can really do there. Man, Slither Wisp is a trap, guys. Don't play this card. It's so bad. <sighs> Still no land. Why? I'm trying to tempt them into not using the bounty to kill the Wisp, and they do. Down to six. Opponent at 37. They're still not done with stupid life gain cards that are absolutely destroying me. That's not a bad draw. That draw is interesting. Six cards in their graveyard. So they can grow the Enforcer. <laughs> stop! Frickin' stop, dude! Just stop! Flood out like a good white mage. Oh my goodness. Please stop. This is just so obnoxious. All right. Um, let's see. Building up the cutthroat won't get the job done. We do have to play an enforcer. Bouncing something won't really get the job done. Yeah, I guess it's a throwaway cutthroat here. All right, three, two, death touch can block here and here. What do they want? Yeah, I guess that threatens to kill both. They use the bounty for protection, whatever. Down to four. Still facing too many creatures. Now we draw the land. Wrong land for Gadwick though. So what do I do? I try to ambush with the Brazen Borrower here. I can also bounce like the Daxos. I can't I can't double spell even though I hit the land. I wonder if I could have played this better to have a double spell here to give me a chance. I don't know. They didn't I guess they're going to wait to use the killer, which is smart. I don't know why they didn't do that before. Let's just pass to blockers, though. And now we can get out of Slither Wisp and have the Borrower for next turn. The opponent just taps it down, though, right? But maybe we draw another land. Yeah, backup Daxos makes a lot of sense. God, Slither Wisp, you're such a trap. <laughs> or I just have to play a much higher land count so that I actually get to play the spells I would draw. That's a good draw. That's a very good draw. If the opponent blocks with the Daxos and I bounce the Hawk here, do they lose the Daxos? They do. But we have to force our opponent to tap this. Otherwise, they'll just tap something else. Two freaking life, everybody. 
We're still here, though. Make it a good draw. <laughs> Another wisp. It's not good enough, is it? Oh, I can pass to blockers here, though. They let me do it. They let me do it. What are we bouncing? I guess we bounce the hawk, right? Because it comes back as a 1-1? One, one? Ah, that's got to be game. I can't overcome that, can I? From here? From 2 life? I guess they're playing around a counter spell, but they miss lethal. Gadwick, you're looking bad. <laughs> oh. oh, that game. Everything about that game was miserable from the first Loxodon. Oh, that was a tough one. Will I get mana screwed again? Let's find out. Today on the CGB show against Mono Red. Nobody else buys light, lightning bolt sleeves. Just people who have been playing the same exact Mono Red strategy for 20 plus years. That's who buys lightning bolt sleeves. I like seeing that land. I feel so much better. Nemesis. How'd I know? How did I freaking know? Unbelievable. All right. All right. Salt content. We're gonna we're gonna try to scale it back, but no promises. I don't I don't scale back the salt content when facing my nemesis. A lot of people saying that mono red is the best deck now. It will be for a week or two until people figure out what the best deck actually is. Mono Red always preys on people who dare try to brew and make interesting decks. I think we just pass. This means our opponent has a Bone Crusher Giant. Let's not give them a target. Let's make them waste their mana doing nothing. They might even throw it at our face because they don't know what to do with it. Sometimes do nothing is appropriate. See? They're just tanked here. Your go, Red Mage. Make your play, smarty pants. Most Red Mages can't sit there and do nothing. See? They can't do it. They just can't do it. Oh yeah, play that pre-combat. I like that. Makes what I'm about to do to you feel even better. They still don't know I'm Demir Flash, but they're playing around me anyway. What do you guys make of that? Trixie Hobbits is. Well, they're about to feel smart. I hate letting my opponents feel smart. But it's worth it here. Mm, no need to attack. It's not a race yet. Opponent wants to set up their Ember Cleave. Or not. Or so. Who knows? Black Lance Paragon will leave up two mana for the Brazen Barrows. Another giant? Okay, so now we know that they are not going to do that. We want a Petty Theft something to grow this. What do we theft? I guess we theft the Spitter. I was gonna ambush and kill this thing, but... Yeah, nice, I know. Trixie Demir Flash. Cute lizard. Can I kill it? Would you like to block the 5-4? I guess they could have an Infuriate. But we would have seen that, right? No, not necessarily. The Paragon had Death Touch, but there was no stick. There's no way they have an Infuriate. They're salty. They're salty. Salty, salty, red mage. 
This game didn't go the way I wanted. I wanted burn face for the million billionth time in my life, and I didn't get to. I'm gonna rope. Nemesis. I did a light in your pain. Annex. Only one card in that graveyard, everybody. We could kill the spitter so that they don't get another 1-1, um, one, one, but I don't think that's worth it. We do have to figure out, though, how to interact with an Ember Cleave now. It's shaky ground. Shaky ground. Do we try to draw into it? We could. We could also play the Whisper Agent, which in effect sees another card too, and grows the Cutthroat. Yeah, that's not it. Wispy Wispy Boy. What do you think? Be aggressive? We're at 18. If the opponent attacks all in and Ember Cleaves, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It's not lethal. Plus, we also have Drown in the Lock. So I think being aggressive here is pretty good. Because if they just go all in and attack, they die. But Red Mage say no block. Red Mage go days without block. Torbran. It's not a cleave. Let's kill this. Just so it doesn't get to attack and put that three damage on us. And they're at four. I mean, you've got two blockers. We'll have a third attacker here. I don't think they have spot removal or we would have seen it. And they say your turn. Go for lethal. Do you have tricks or are you dead? <laughs> the begrudging block at the end. When the red mage finally sees that death is imminent, they will finally attempt this thing known as blocking. Well, this hand is weird. Especially since if I draw Gadwick, I can't play it for a long time. We'll try it. I'm not sure if, not sure if this is where we want to be. Mono green again. So many love struck beasts, so little time. We'll keep the other blue source. We've got plenty of double blue cards in the deck, but keeping a fifth land feels a little scary. Stone Coil Serpent, get in there. So, let's see if this opponent attacks with the 1 1. Other opponents have not in this spot. This opponent gives zero foxes. We can't punish them, but maybe we'll be able to ambush the 1-1 one, one next turn with the Wisp. Ooh, the double Thieves Guild Enforcer with Slither Wisp. That's pretty hot. I really want to get the Wisp down. And then I can go Thieves Guild, Thieves Guild, and Paragon draw three next turn. If I play the Slither Wisp and it dies to some kind of removal spell, I'm going to be really sad. But I think I can come back from any situation. Yorvo. Okay. Here's the Wisp. Cards in Graveyard, just one. I don't think we're going to get the Enforcers up to Death Touch just yet. Everybody. Okay. Okay, let's... Um, I guess we'll go with the cheaper one first, because we might draw like another Thieves' Guild Enforcer, for example, to get to the Death Touch. Another Slither Wisp.
That's a lot of land. A lot more than I really wanted. So do we block the legendary and the one one here and take five? The love struck beast might not be able to attack next turn. If the opponent doesn't cough up another one one. And now these are three twos, but the scavenging ooze is actually really messy. Yeah, they should eat their own graveyard to reduce the Thieves Guild Enforcers. That's not cool. That's not... My draw is not cool either. This is some crap right now. Oof. Uncastable. But the opponent doesn't know that. Although the, nothing will hold priority, so they will. They'll be, they'll be in the know. This is another rogue, though. It does mill the opponent. Yeah, let's get the tap land out of the way. Ugh. This is bad. This is bad. How much can the opponent punish us? Can they make a 1-1? One, one? Can the ooze get in there? Primal Might. One Slither Wisp down. Gross, but these go back up to three twos. If the opponent eats their own graveyard, they go back down. As we see why this card is so weird and bad sometimes. And uh, no blocks. We're going to try to hold out for better next turn. But we've got to kill that ooze. We've got to draw a drown in the lock. That's a draw. That is a draw. We, let's find out if our opponent is willing to block with their lovestruck beast, because I would take that trade. Just you. Interesting. The opponent thinks that they can get out of the uh, situation with their ooze, but this is a lot of Thieves Guild Mills. Ooh, disfigure. Pretty good, pretty good. Man, that ooze is a house though. Let's also... No, we don't have to kill it yet, but we should kill it before all is said and done. Um, do we want to play this and make their graveyard even bigger? I don't think that's necessary. All right, another one bites the dust. That ooze, though. That freaking ooze. 15 cards in their graveyard. It's going to be a lot harder to eat the whole graveyard with this ooze. We're actually outpacing it with these rogues, which is kind of nuts. Freaking ooze. It's going to gain a lot of life, but it has to face Death Touchers, and we're getting card draw. If we keep our Slither Wisp, we're doing okay. Or if we find a Gadwick to reload and tap it down, that, this, is, this is a matchup where a Gadwick is important. Man, they just don't quit. Just don't quit on that grave. They're at 12. They need to get it to less than 8 to take Death Touch away from the Enforcers. If they somehow give it Trample and have a Ram through, it's just lethal. Absolutely disgusting. Our answer is Drown in the Lock. Or just hitting them with something Death Touch, like a Black Lance Paragon. But if that's how they spend their whole turn, I'm not mad. That's okay with me. Brazen Borrower. Yes. See, it's a rogue. There's a Black Lance Paragon. Hell yeah. Absolutely. For the most part, I will say this deck has done an awesome job farming mono green. Like, I've always felt really ahead against mono green. I don't feel ahead in many matchups, but I, I, I feel really close. I feel like the underdog most of the time, but not with mono green. With mono green, I'm like, let's do this. 
Mill him. We're gonna mill him. We got him down to 26 cards, darn it. 26 cards. Oh, I'm playing this now. I'm being aggressive. You can't stop me. Come on, Gadwick, where are you at? Not there. Still looking for it, looking for some kind of removal. Don't find it. We have effectively flooded our hand. Sure. All right. They can go up to eight with using the ooze. They get a block here and a block here. They still take 12. They need a fog. At long last, the ooze has ventured out into my graveyard. The Pelt Collector's final stand act of defiance to kill the Slither Wisp that drew so many cards and did so much damage. Oh my gosh, finally, Slither Wisp carrying the team as the deck was meant to perform. Looks like mono red, nothing but mono red. This hand's okay. It's not great by any means. This is a lot of pain. <gasps> it's not mono red. Let's save the sailor to follow the wisp and set up our hand a bit more. I feel rewarded. That's a cutthroat. What are you doing? Adventure. I don't know about my adventure matchup. Cards like Bone Crusher Giant and Brazen Borrower are a pain. The deck kind of gets infinite value, which is gross and stupid. And uh, yeah, five lands to two. Good, good fair fight when they get to go Clover into, into uh, Beanstalk Giant. It's classic. We'll see if they have Bone Crusher Giant. Maybe they have that right here. Nope. Seems like Brazen Borrower is the is the has. Counting your land. You just Okay. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever you do you. Like, hmm, how many lands do I have in the middle of my combat step? Uh, well, you had three, and you did the thing your deck does, and yes, you have five. You are, it's very admirable, really. They're waiting for a double target here. So I don't think I should play my Wisp. Let's use our own Brazen Borrower here, and send back their Lucky Clover. See how they like them apples. Because that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to time a borrower where it bounces two things. Because if they only bounce one, they don't get to keep their borrower. Yep, count your land. Count your land very carefully. Good job. Good boy. All right, I'll play this. If they have a uh, giant, we're a little worse off. Do I play this? Maybe I should just hold it to go with the Slither Wisp. But having a 4-3 means it does take Clover plus Giant and two triggers. Yeah, let's let's go for it. Besides, the opponent might even flash in their Borrower and trade with it, which would be dumb. Oh yeah, count my lands. There's still three. Yep, you've got six. Yeah, you're really good at magic. Wow, they slow rolled a Giant. That surprises me. Weird choice. I think they were... A little greedy, and they ended up getting just kind of a, a marginal payoff on their giant instead of getting dubs with the clover. Just slam a beanstalk giant? Nah, they don't have the guts. I do think that play pattern means they only have one giant, because they were... They were trying to be pretty greedy about it, so we should definitely run the Wisp here. Try to start getting ahead that way. And they have another giant. Never mind. What a dumb idea that was that I just had. We should play the Cutthroat, guys, and try to get it bigger than the giant. Actually, 
you know, we get enough cards out of this. We should just go for it while we can. We're never going to get this many cards out of it if our opponent has mana available. So while they are going to use the Bone Crusher on it next turn, at least we get a good deal. Man, those borrowers look bad, though. Hmm, maybe we can kill both tokens with an attack, but I don't really want to play the Petty Theft. I want to play this and this. That's what I want to play. So, get him. Shock and pass. They forgot to count their land. Clearly this will be the turn they make a tragic misplay. Wait, nope, wait, nope, yep, maybe, no, okay. All right, so this will duplicate target here. Let's let the duplication target first. You can't bounce like the Clover in response and prevent it. That's not how the cards work, unfortunately. I mean, opponent tanking on this giant redirect. Kind of weird. Not going to lie. Yeah, it's Slither Wisp. Okay. So, cut through. Draw a card. Take a damage. Down to 11. Borrower, take another damage. Grow the cutthroat. Down to 10. Cunning Nightbonder, very late. Would have been helpful a few turns ago, is not very helpful now. We're just trying to cheese him out. Just see if we can get those last points of damage. How many Bone Crusher Giants does our opponent have? That's the question. Infinite? Or just two? No in betweens in the high drama of MTG. No timeouts. Better make a play. Your time is up. Okay, all this time they had Brazen Borrower. And they have made their choice. They're going after the Cutthroat and the Borrower, and they're going to try to swing the race. I mean, they do have a 5 5. I do have a way to bounce it. Just you. I could bounce that. I think, hmm. I think I want to play the Bonder and two Brazen Borrowers here, though. So I think we take it and see what the opponent does. Yeah, cast your own Borrower. Yeah, cast your own Giant. So now they're building a board. They're building a heck of a board. Good for them. Still, the race is on. Now, the question is, if you bounce a borrower, can we still win? I don't think so. So, I think we have to play all of these. Wisp. So close. Get him. Down to five. Wisp Cutthroat is four total mana. Most of my cards I can still play, so let's get the scry. This works, right? Right. Close, close game.
No stick. All right, so block, block, block. Take two, should be fine. Let's play the three one. Is it good enough? What do they have? What can they do? Yeah! That was a good game. Oh my goodness. Whew! We're the end boss into Diamond 1. Quick outro because the games are running long here. Shout out to the Cool Kids Club. Thank you so much. If you watch the entire video front to front to back, you, you are cool. This deck is also cool. Is it legitimately setting the meta on fire? No. No, not quite. It is like day one for me of playing this format. So I'm sure I got something wrong in the numbers. And it is possible that we want some kind of counterspell, although I'm not even sure which counterspell to run. It's also possible we need to raise the land count anyway, because bad mana definitely cost me games. There's no doubt about it. But what I love about this deck, it farmed mono green like my mono green matchups felt amazing they never knew what to do they never knew what to play around they never knew how to attack it um maybe with some experience that the advantage would go down but right now i feel so good against mono green i also feel pretty solid against mono red there are certainly draws that can be problematic but i'm not scared of their ember cleaves most of the time with all of our spot removal and with all of our instant speed interaction and we definitely get in their head where they're not sure if they should ember cleave or not this the matchup with mono white was horrible and the more i think about the matchup with mono white the more i think i can't win it so if mono white takes off which i don't predict i don't see that happening i don't play against it often but mono white's probably a headache winota is probably very bad if we don't draw like heartless act and have a brazen borrower ready i think i played my match against winota pretty poorly where i used my brazen borrower early so that's going to be something to keep an eye on as well but i never felt I never felt in many hopeless situations with the deck. For the most part, I feel like it has game. I feel like it can hang. So if you want to try something different in this new meta, it might be a good time to dust off this pretty aggressive Flash tribal version of Demir Flash. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.